afternoon. Yes, uh, I'm Paul Haystain, and I'd like to talk uh, today about that uh, elephant in the room, and that's uh, behavioral change. We hear so much uh, about uh, technology these days as being the answer for um, a, su a sustainable future. We hear about uh, electric cars, uh, hybrid cars, biomass energy, wind parks in the sea, uh, passive houses, etc., etc. But in my view, uh, there isn't going to be any uh, sustainable future if we don't make a deep change in our habits and especially our diet. So my talk today is about that elephant. But um, still many people love technology, so in my pocket here, I have what I think is the most important tool any of us will ever use in building a sustainable future. What is that tool? I'll show it to you just now at the end of my talk. Um, I think most of us know this uh, very simple formula by now. We've seen it earlier in this uh, day. Population times consumption is our ecological footprint. To my mind, that's a more important formula than E equals MC squared because here we're really looking at the future of uh, uh, the human race on the planet. We know that if we stay within the uh, carrying capacity of the Earth, we've got a chance at a good future. And if we don't, yeah, then we know that within the lifetime of even our children, we're going to be headed for ecological economic uh, collapse. Uh, maybe you've read the WWF uh, Living Planet Report 2010. They say that we're already into 30% overshoot. So that's not a good uh, condition to be in. But like everybody else, I think uh, I spent the first 25 years of my career as an engineer making to, uh, working to make those two first blocks bigger. So I'm just as much part of the problem as anybody else. When I was born, we had 2.3 billion people on Earth, and now we're up to seven, uh, three times more. I come from Zimbabwe. In my youth, a beautiful country, we had four million people. Now we're up to 13. And I have to admit, even in my private life as a white African, uh, I've produced six children. So I've followed that uh, blue graph there. I, have, uh, I know all of you uh, sensible Europeans have only had uh, two children per family. You're uh, following that nice uh, green curve there. Also, on the consumption, uh, like everybody else, uh, consuming a lot of uh, meat and dairy products, that's the cow on top. You live in a comfortable house, you buy lots of groceries. My wife and I each had a car. I visit my uh, parents in Cape Town and my sister in New Zealand and an uh, old family farm in Norway. So, consuming just like everybody else. But then I started uh, learning about sustainability. And once you realize what the effect of all that is on our footprint, and that we're all adding to that 30% uh, overshoot, I decided that with the rest of my career, I want to do something to be part of the uh, solution and not the problem. So we started the One Planet Foundation in Amersfoort to uh, catalyze projects that um, reduce carbon dioxide and population. Uh, sorry, not population, <laughs> and uh, footprint. <laughs> that population reduction should have come earlier, but uh, a bit too late. So, um, what do we do about that uh, consumption block? We're obviously not going to uh, shoot half the population to get rid of the overshoot. So the answer has to come from that middle block. Some people might divide that, like Ray Anderson, into affluence and technology. But I think it's just basically consumption. So what do we do about reducing that? We took great um, encouragement from a fantastic project run by the Dutch government called Perspective. From 1996 to 98, they took uh, 12 uh, normal Dutch households and asked them all to live on a strict carbon budget. They had a family coach. They had detailed tables showing uh, the carbon impact of all the products that they uh, used. And it was a fantastic project. Just by behavioral change, people could reduce by 60% their carbon footprint. No technology, no solar panels on the roof, no hybrid cars, nothing. So, a great project. Well, we thought if you can do that just in a normal home without any technology, just by behavioral change, we'd like to go a step further. If you give people the chance to grow their own vegetables, to generate some of their own uh, energy on the roofs like that, to share pool cars, we were pretty certain we could take it to 80%. Well, 80% reduction is what... Um, WWF, British government, uh, all these places, uh, scientists are saying 
we need to reduce by 80% uh, before 2050 to keep that global warming within uh, uh, two degrees. So that's, we took the inspiration from perspective and we wanted to go a step further to 80%. Now, what, the, what are the building blocks of a sustainable life? Well, here they are. We think, first of all, just like the last uh, session, you have to integrate everything. Most important, um, the multi-generation. Uh, we'd like Acovilla to be little communities of people of different age groups. It's a bit like a uh, little African village. The grandparents can help looking after the children. The younger people can help with the heavier tasks and so on. Next area, food. Try to grow some of your own food locally. Uh, a diet based far more on plants and um, leaves, and much less on uh, meat and dairy products. That has a major impact on the, the carbon uh, footprint. Uh, mobility. Yeah. Uh, learn to walk again. Use bicycles. Uh, use the buses. Even have some carpools in, in the uh, eco villa. Purchasing, as we saw from that project perspective, if we uh, are careful with what we buy and we calculate uh, the carbon impact of all the products, you can make a huge difference to your uh, footprint as a family. Recreation. Discover the joys of uh, places uh, in your own country, places you can reach by train. We don't all have to take the family to Bali twice a year. Energy neutral and passive buildings uh, are available now at a price that are not much uh, higher than a normal conventional building but you have to plan it uh, early and try and integrate everything certainly the uh, energy savings every month more than pay for that uh, extra mortgage uh, waste another important block all the products you buy what you can't recycle locally make sure it can go back to the manufacturer biodiversity Plant uh, in your garden a huge variety of plants, even uh, insect uh, hotels uh, are quite popular now. Try and get the biodiversity of the eco villa and the gardens uh, uh, rapidly Im improved. Nobody's going back to the Stone Age. In the eco villa, we want to um, implement all the techniques of modern technology that uh, help people work at home. You can have a modern office, uh, teleconferencing, etc. And of course, the last block, make use of all of the uh, techniques of uh, sustainable energy that are available now. Solar panels, micro wind, store the warmth uh, from the summer in the ground and reuse it in the winter and so on. So for us, trying to achieve that 80% uh, reduction in footprint, that was our first uh, ambition, Ecovilla. Those are, for us, the building blocks of a sustainable life. Those same blocks you can also apply to the working environment. This is where we uh, work now in Amersfoort. It's a very old government building from 1971 with the very worst energy label. We'd like to apply all of those blocks of sustainable living and apply it to the working environment as well. So we're going to take that building and uh, change it completely. It's a little bit fuzzy, but... Um, those, those blocks I showed you earlier, for example, food. There you can see uh, on the left-hand side, we're starting uh, already next week to build a nice vegetable garden on top of the roof. We'll have uh, vegetables, some small fruit trees, some chickens, insect hotels, and so on. on the, we're going to build a huge glass atrium on the south side, and we're going to have, there you can see it, uh, vertical gardens. And on the front of the building, we want to have, uh, there you see it on the top left, uh, plants covering the building. So all of that uh, growth, what we can produce there, we're going to consume in a little uh, biological cooking school on the right-hand side, and the waste from that will go into a fermentation tank in the bottom of the, of the building. So food, energy, we'll put on a big new energy roof with all those integrated aspects of uh, energy technology. In short, all of those blocks we're going to apply. We'd like people to have an, a work day from home, the time you leave in the morning until the time you come back, which is also 80% less footprint. So, 
coming back to it, what can we do today? We know that just by behavior, we can reduce our impact from consumption by 60%. If we add uh, the technologies that are coming online tomorrow, we're sure we can get to 80%. Even myself, I try, yeah, I found that cutting down by uh, meat and dairy products by 80% is surprisingly easy. Even our house, we sold it, we moved to a, a smaller home, literally it cost me half the, half the previous payments in monthly mortgages, and my wife and family are, are just as happy. <laughs> I, I tried to try to get rid of the car, but there I met some very serious resistance from my wife, so we're still working on that block. <laughs> so, now, um, I told you that I had in my pocket uh, the most important tool any of us will probably ever use in building a sustainable future. Now, what is that? Here it is. <laughs> It's a kitchen fork. It, it, it was Gandhi who said that this is the most uh, powerful tool known to mankind. What we put in our mouths every day really determines the future of the world. If you think that uh, livestock have a massive impact, 30% uh, of the entire ice-free surface of our planet is used to support livestock. 70% of all agricultural land we saw those beautiful forests in South America. 70% of all of those beautiful forests are now covered with uh, livestock pastures. And livestock alone creates more carbon dioxide than the entire transport sector together. So maybe uh, I, I lied to you all. It wasn't an elephant in the room. That elephant is actually a cow. <laughs> so when you go to the supermarket tonight, please remember that with this instrument, we determine the future of the world. Thank you.